plan généré par le pour tous nos pays. Les chefs d'État et de gouvernement du commissaire sont déterminés à renforcer l'œuvre d'intégration et promouvoir le développement économique et social de notre continent. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Merci, Madagascar. Je voudrais exprimer notre compassion et notre solidarité vis-à-vis -vis de Madagascar suite au cyclone auquel le ministre des Affaires étrangères vient de faire allusion, qui frappe le pays. Donc toute notre compassion et toute notre solidarité à Madagascar. Je passe la parole à l'Éthiopie au nom de l'IGAD. Uh, Excellence uh, Mr. Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, and the chairperson of the African Union. Excellency Mr. Moussa Faki Mohamed, chairperson of the African Union Commission. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me start by expressing on my behalf and that of my delegation a sincere appreciation to the people and the government of the Republic of Rwanda for warm reception and the generous hospitality afforded to us the green city of Kigali. I would like also to convey the message of well wish for the success of the summit from my Prime Minister, His Excellency Hailemaram de Saling, who could not be able to attend today's summit due to pressing matter at home. Excellencies, today is uh, another milestone in the history of Africa. Hence, on behalf of IGAD, I am very pleased to address this August Assembly as we launch the African CFTA Agreement. All member states need to be commended for the progress we have made in the establishment process of institution. We would like to single out His Excellency Mohamed Asouf, President of the Republic of Niger and the champion of the CFTA for his dedication in making this event to happen. We should also recognize the contribution of the African Union Commission and the regional economic communities for their coordination and support to the negotiation process. And the UNICA, African Development Bank, and UNCTAD for their technical support extended to the process. IGAD also appreciates His Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, and the Chairperson of the African Union, graciously for hosting this extraordinary summit. Excellencies, we believe that the African CFTA will deepen the integration of the continent and lay foundation for the establishment of Continental Customs Union. The launch of CFTA will indeed be instrumental in realizing the African Union's noble vision for an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa as envisioned in Agenda 2063. It also strongly believes that the Africa. Bien, merci. Merci. Voilà, nous sommes à la fin des interventions du président en exercice des communautés. Nous voulons remercier les communautés pour leur soutien au projet de libéralisation du continent. Et il n'en saurait en être autrement dans la mesure où les communautés ont été impliquées dès le départ dans le processus de mise en place de la zone de libre échange continentale. Alors nous allons passer la parole maintenant aux chefs de gouvernement et de délégation, en commençant par les chefs d'État. Je donne la parole au président de la République de Centrafrique. Excellences, Messieurs les chefs d'État et de gouvernement, Monsieur le président de la Commission de l'Union africaine, distingués invités, Mesdames et Messieurs, je voudrais joindre ma voix à celle de tous ceux qui m'ont précédé pour exprimer au nom de la délégation centrafricaine et à mon nom propre, nos vifs remerciements à Son Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la République 
Paul Kagame et au peuple rwandais pour l'accueil combien chaleureux et fraternel qui nous a été réservé depuis notre arrivée dans cette belle ville de Kigali. Qu'il me soit permis d'adresser également mes félicitations à Son Excellence, M. Mahamadou Issoufou, président de la République du Niger, champion de la zone de libre-échange continental africain. Je voudrais aussi adresser mes félicitations à M. Moussa Faki Mahamad, président de la Commission de l'Union africaine, ainsi qu'à tous ses collaborateurs pour les efforts louables qu'ils ne cessent de déployer pour promouvoir le développement sur notre continent. Je reste convaincu, Monsieur le Président, que ce sommet historique qui se tient sous votre présidence contribuera à réaliser les espoirs des peuples africains pour une véritable intégration et le développement de notre continent. Monsieur le Président, ce sommet extraordinaire, déterminant pour l'avenir de, de notre continent, restera longtemps gravé dans les annales de l'histoire de l'Afrique, car il va marquer la ferme détermination de tous les Africains à travers leurs engagements, à prendre en main leur devenir, à s'ouvrir à eux-mêmes dans un esprit compétitif avec les autres régions du monde. C'est un pas de plus dans la consolidation de l'unité africaine et l'accélération de la mobilité et de l'intégration sur le continent conformément à l'agenda 2063. C'est pourquoi nous nous réjouissons de grandes lignes contenues dans la feuille de route proposée qui nous dresse aujourd'hui de manière ambitieuse les différentes phases de la réalisation de cet accord. Pour ce faire, chaque État membre, chaque communauté économique régionale en rapport avec la Commission de l'Union africaine a une grande responsabilité. Monsieur le Président, mon pays, la République centrafricaine, est pleinement engagé dans le processus de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine. C'est pourquoi nous nous réjouissons d'avoir signé l'acte de naissance de cette ère nouvelle de notre continent. Monsieur le Président, l'Afrique est désormais dans un processus irréversible pour son développement. Certes, la marche ne sera pas facile à cause de, nos, de nombreux défis que nous devons relever, notamment l'instabilité politique et sécuritaire. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je, je passe la parole euh, euh, à la délégation du Maroc. Message of His Majesty Mohammed VI to this uh, meeting, uh, Mr. Chairman of the African Union, Mr. Chairman, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we would like first of all to express our thanks and gratitude to our brother Paul Kagame, Chairman of the African Union for the very important efforts that he has made in order to ensure the success of this extraordinary summit. We would like also to express our thanks and gratitude to Mr. Ma uh, Faki Mohamed uh, for his uh, commitment in order to give uh, a new momentum to our organization and His Excellency Mohamed Yusuf for the role that he played in this project. Our meeting today is uh, very important. Uh, for uh, the uh, for uh, free trade ex for free trade uh, especially that uh, this uh, embodies uh, our common will to uh, build up uh, the future future africa and uh, the visits that we have uh, made throughout africa has uh, taught us uh, that it is as much as the return of Morocco to uh, its uh, family uh, as it represents an embodiment uh, in order to unite our efforts. It reflects also our attachment to the spirit of the Union and also uh, the uh, territorial integrity of our countries. The inauguration of the CFTA is considered today as being very important for the development of Africa, which reflects the will of Africa and for the benefit of Africa. Morocco, 
thanks to its uh, rich experiences, is aware that economic openness and the setting up of free trade areas in the north and the south uh, ha has created uh, fears and challenges which we'll have to face up with the necessary mechanism. And uh, whenever these challenges are taken into consideration, there appears the advent for national economic development and new economic processes. Any attempt to encounter these attempts will lead to the backwardness of the continent. Projects should take into consideration to take abreast, to keep abreast with the digital technology. It is necessary also for the future negotiations to take into consideration other issues such as, for example, a fair competitiveness, the encouragement of investments, because we're building up the future of Je donne la parole au président de la République arabe sahraoui démocratique. Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Chairman of the African Union, Your Excellency Mr. Yusufu. Uh, leader of the uh, CFTA. First of all, I would like to express my thanks and gratitude to President Paul Kagame and through him to the people and the government of Rwanda for the warm welcome and hospitality which we have been accustomed to. We have been extended with great hospitality and welcome in this beautiful capital city of Kigali. I would like also uh, to uh, thank you, Mr. President, for uh, hosting this extraordinary summit in which uh, leaders of uh, Africa have signed the CFTA. I would like also to commend the work that has been achieved by His Excellency Mohammed Yusuf, the President of the Republic of Niger, which has been crowned with this uh, signing of this important document, which was signed today in this historic day. There is no doubt that uh, this is an extraordinary uh, moment uh, which uh, will mark the history uh, of uh, our continent in order to make a considerable progress uh, in sustainable development and the enhancement of integration among the various African countries. These protocols uh, and framework agreement is an important development in the endeavor of uh, African leaders to embody the, uh, embody uh, the uh, goals of Agenda 2063, uh, including the uh, achievement of a peaceful uh, solution and also uh, to achieve decolonization in our continent. While our country is uh, signing today the uh, agreement of the CITFA, uh, uh, reiterates its commitment, uh, Mr. Chairman, and with all member states, uh, in order to implement uh, fully uh, this uh, agreement. We are quite confident uh, about the capacity of Africa to overcome all the obstacles and problems uh, which uh, would uh, hinder the implementation of this important agreement. Long live United, uh, United and Prosperous Africa. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je passe la parole au Président de la Gambie. La Gambie. Your Excellency, Mr. Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda and the Chairperson of the African Union. Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government of AU Assembly. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here on this historic event marking the signing of an African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. This is the first time in the history of our Union that we have decided to create a free trade area. The aim is to boost into African trade to promote economic growth, structural transformation, and industrialization of the African economies, improving commercial engagement between African countries will not only be crucial 
for the development of our economies, but will also strengthen our engagement with the rest of the world. Your Excellencies, the forerunner of economic integration initiative over a century with the establishment of the South African Custom Union in 1901. Africa's continued desire for regional integration is because our individual economies are too small to enable Africa to harness the vast potential and opportunities the continent offers to her people. This extraordinary summit is to strengthen our desire to create the economic space for our industries and businesses to leverage these opportunities that Africa offers. The free trade area will help African industries and businesses to become competitive by creating economic scale, repositioning them to effectively compete and engage with the rest of the world. It can also establish and strengthen the regional product value chain, facilitate the transfer of technology and knowledge. The agreement will also boost industrial development, promote economic transformation, and create new job opportunities and wealth for the youthful population. I am also with the strong conviction that given the African market over one billion people, the implementation of the free trade area will significantly increase into African trade, which currently stands at about 12%. I therefore commend the inclusion of the industrialization as a strategic vehicle in realizing the CFTA goals. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je donne uh, la parole au Premier ministre de la Tanzanie. Thanks, Your Excellency. Isafu, President of the United Republic of Niger and leader of the African continent free trade area. Your Excellency Musafaki Amahat, protocol is observed. Today is a historical day for our continent as we launch one of the critical milestones in our long journey to economic integration in the fulfillment of the objectives and the principles of Agenda 2063, namely the African continent free trade area. Without doubt, the African continent CFTA will enhance economic growth, deepen intra-Africa trade, create jobs and employment, increase investments, and be an effective look for the our people to access a large market of 1.2 billion people and gain from economics of scale. In this regard, Tanzania reaffirms it, a, it is political commitment to realize this collection aspiration for the welfare and the betterment of the people of Africa. Tanzania, we have signed all the three instruments. We shall then subject the two instruments to national legal processes before ratification. In this respect, Tanzania commits to, expedi to expeditiously certify the agreement after ensuring the internal domestic and the legal processes have been deepened. My delegation is fully aware that there is outstanding work with regard to the legal scrubbing of the, some annexes to the agreement. We argue for their finalization without further delay to allow smooth implementation of this flagship project. We further argue for the commencement and a timely conclusion of the second phase of the negotiations, which will focus on drafting protocol on competition, intellectual property, right, and investment. In conclusion, I wish to also thank the, all those who we, were, in one way or another, contributed to the success of this historical understanding. After today, the onus of completing and implementing this process is now on all of us, a member state of our organization. Thank you for listening.
Merci, Monsieur le Premier ministre. Je donne la parole aux Seychelles. Le Premier ministre de Seychelles. Mr. Chairman, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to be here in Kigali today, March 21st, 2018, marking yet another milestone in our history, a beginning echoing the essence of our Pan-Africanism. This morning, we witnessed our commitment towards the African trade integration, building into Agenda 2063 for more prosperous Africa, based on inclusive growth and sustainable development. The African CFTA brings together 55 countries, a combined population of over 1 billion people, and a combined GDP of more than $3.4 trillion. This is especially important for us, small island African states, who face the ongoing realities of limited resources and small markets. This endeavor will therefore provide us opportunities to increase our manufacturing base, create regional value chains, and provide a larger market for a private sector in both goods and services. What we are achieving today is no small feat. It epitomizes our commitment towards Africa's trade agenda. It will further foster our development by establishing a platform to create jobs, to reduce poverty, leading to a more stable, peaceful, and prosperous continent. The CFTA provides a wide array of growth opportunities, but other equally important initiatives must be developed or maintained to complement the trade agenda to ensure that we all reap its benefits and that no one is left behind. Your Excellency, maritime security remains an important aspect for us as a substantial volume of goods is transported by sea. As a continent, we need to have a strong position on safeguarding our oceans, more so our shipping routes. This is sine qua non for maintaining and enhancing intra-African trade. We must ensure the development of our own shipping lines and more extensive routes for more coverage for our continent and her islands. This will lower shipping costs and render African goods more competitive. In this spirit, Seychelles will host the African Shipowners Association Summit in April. We invite you all and look forward to an active participation at this event. Excellencies, I thank all our technicians, chief negotiators, for their tireless efforts in ensuring that what we had before us this morning was worthy of our signatures. ...of constructive engagement to address the remaining issues as we embark on the next phase of negotiations. I thank Excellency President Paul Kagame, uh, our, our chairperson and host, Excellencies, all protocol observed. It is an honor for me on behalf of the Kingdom of Lesotho to address this special extraordinary summit of the African Union. I wish to thank President Paul Kagame, the government and the people of Rwanda for the warm welcome they gave us in this legendary capital. I would like to thank the African Union Commission for facilitating this important meeting. That marks the adoption of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement an instrument that will facilitate smooth inter-Africa trade for the betterment of our continent. This has been a long-awaited moment as long as this process began in 2015 when the African Union House of States and Government launched the negotiations to establish CFTA. CFTA, I'm sorry. Our technical experts have been hard at work with the negotiations and have to date made significant progress. Thank God for that. However, a lot of work the built-in agenda. We as heads of state and government, therefore, need to continue to, off to continue offering the same support you have been rendering to our negotiating teams to, make to motivate them until successful conclusions 
have been reached in this process. The Kingdom of Lesotho has been and remains fully committed to the negotiations and look forward to the entry into force of the agreement. As we are all aware, full implementation of the agreement will play an important role towards Africa's economic growth, resulting in job creation, especially in our youth who are in dire need of employment and other opportunities. As a continent, we must harness Africa's brain power. Furthermore, with more than 50% of Africa's population living under abject poverty, we can rest assured that resultant jobs, which will emerge as a result of this effort, will contribute dramatically to poverty alleviation on the continent. It is unfortunate that after 50 years of independence and in an overwhelming majority of our countries, we still have not been able to trade meaningfully with each other. Instead, Africa trades mostly with other continents. The phenomenon will end after full implementation of the free and unhindered trade in Africa. It is worth noting that there is need to lay a firm foundation to ensure smooth implementation of FC, FCFTA. This involves alignment. Merci, Monsieur le Premier Ministre. Je passe la parole au Premier Ministre du Swaziland. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman of the African Union, Chairperson of the African Union Commission, and the champion of the African continent free trade area, head of state and government, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the head of state of the Kingdom of Swaziland, His Majesty King Mswati III, it is my honor to bring the best wishes of His Majesty and the Swazi nation to this meeting. We also express our deep gratitude to the President, Government, and the people of Rwanda for their gracious hospitality. Chairperson, I take the opportunity to commend the champion and chairperson of the African Continental Free Trade Area for the role they have played in fast-tracking the negotiations. Today marks a special day for the African continent as we prepare for the signing and of the collective markets in line with the objectives and principles of the Abuja Treaty establishing the African Economic Community. Concluding the negotiations on the framework agreement, together with the three protocols, represent a historic milestone for our continent in creating a single market for goods and services. The establishment and operationalization of the agreement will lead to a higher volume of trade, create more jobs, and alleviate poverty, thus promoting greater equality. The Kingdom of Swaziland is committed to engaging fully in the negotiation process to achieve a successful conclusion of the outstanding issues. As a symbol of this commitment, Swaziland hereby presents her candidate to host the Secretariat of the African uh, of the African Customs uh, Continental, sorry, Mr. Chairman, of the African Continental Free Trade Area of CFTA. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Premier Ministre. Donc, nous allons revenir à la liste qui est sur uh, l'écran. Je donne la parole euh, au représentant de la République démocratique du Congo. Monsieur le Président, euh, je tiens à remercier au nom du Président Kabila, le Président Kagame, pour euh, avoir abrité ce sommet historique et euh, l'avoir organisé de manière exemplaire. Je tiens à féliciter aussi le Président Mamadou Issoufou, pour son initiative éminemment euh, panafricaine. La RDC a vocation naturelle au, au panafricanisme. 
C'est pour ça qu'elle se doit de contribuer à la réalisation des nobles objectifs définis par les pères fondateurs de notre organisation. Après la libération de notre continent du jeu colonial, nous nous sommes engagés à œuvrer inlassablement au bien-être de nos populations. Cela passe par l'éradication de la pauvreté et la réduction significative des inégalités. L'instauration de la zone de libre-échange euh, constitue euh, un potentiel inestimable de, 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 de croissance et de, 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 de création des richesses et d'emplois. C'est pour cette raison que la République démocratique du Congo vient de signer cet accord de libre-échange qui constitue une non, de faire preuve de toute la diligence requise pour la ratification de cet accord afin d'en accélérer l'entrée en, euh, en vigueur. Comme l'a dit Patrice Lumumba dans sa dernière lettre à son épouse, je cite, « L'Afrique écrira sa propre histoire et elle sera au nord et au sud du Sahara une histoire de gloire et de dignité. » Puisse cet événement s'inscrire dans cette prophétie panafricaine de Patrice Lumumba. Je vous remercie. Merci, Monsieur le ministre. Je donne la parole à la Somalie. Excellency, President Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, Chairperson of the African Union, Excellency Mohamedou Esufu, President of the Republic of Niger, and the champion of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, honorable heads of state, government, and heads of delegations, Excellency Musa Faki Mohamed, chairperson of the African Union Commission, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, let me first extend greetings from my president, His Excellency Mohammed Abdullahi Mohammed Farmacho, who was unable to attend today's summit. Let me also express my deep gratitude to President Paul Kagame, the government and the people of Rwanda for the warm welcome and hospitality that my delegation and I have received during our stay in this beautiful city of Kigali and for hosting this historic summit. We also recognize the great efforts of His Excellency Mohammedou the Sufu President of the Republic of Niger for championing this ambitious project of the CFTA and His Excellency Musa Faki Mohammed, Chairperson of the African Union Commission and his colleagues at the African Union Commission for leading the process. Excellency, the CFT is the greatest opportunity the African continent has to fulfill its potential by putting its resources and citizens to the most productive use for our common development. As we launch, launch the African continental free trade area, we must remember that the world is changing faster. When we create partnerships that empower our people in assessing great opportunities, we are not only striving to realize our economic potential, but we also grow together. The CFTA is a necessary step needed in developing a prosperous Africa, and the fruits of this agreement is for the future of our youth and that of the next generation. More importantly, it cements our unity, preserves our independence, affirms our dignity, and enhances our place in the international system. Excellency, Somalia adds its voice in support of this historical agreement and increasing inter-African trade in reforming our continental economy by exploring new ways to expand commerce and investment among us. Yes, there is more work to be done, but today we are sending a strong continental message in determining our own uh, future of shaping Africa's solid trajectory to prosperity. Somalia pledges to work alongside with the African Union to ensure the ratification and implementation of this agreement so that our people enjoy the benefits of today's milestone decision for generations to come. Thank you, Chair Mara Kozi. Merci. Merci à la Somalie. Je donne la parole au Kenya. Your Excellencies, I read this statement on behalf of His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, who has had to depart back to Kenya for other pressing duties. I thank His Excellency President Paul Kagame, our chairperson and the President of the Republic of Rwanda, for hosting us at this extraordinary Assembly of the Union, whose purpose was to launch the African continental free trade. This is a historic moment for our continent. 
What began as an aspiration developed into a framework and a roadmap carefully evolved through several rounds of negotiations and has now culminated in instruments for the creation of one of the largest free trade areas in the world. I thank all the chief negotiators and technical experts for a job well done. The CFTA is an important mechanism for the achievement of Africa's dream for a single market for goods and services. I also commend the leadership of our champion of the African CFTA, His Excellency Mamadou Isofu, for shepherding this project. The CFTA offers us, as Africa, a competitive edge. It creates a united economic bloc that will boost our trade, help create an African value chain, accelerate the growth of our small and medium enterprises, and power our industrialization. Undoubtedly, combined, all this development will endear the growth of African multinationals, placing us at par with other regional free trade areas. Today, Excellencies, we celebrate an important milestone in the history of our continent. We have engraved our commitment on the agreement of the CFTA and protocols relating to free trade area. At the promise of the CFTA in its full and expeditious implementation, we still have some work to do in view of the protocols and annexes to be completed in the second phase. I therefore take this opportunity to urge all of us to ratify the agreement so that we can all move together towards the realization of the Pan-African vision of an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa as envisioned in Agenda 2063. I am greatly honored and privileged to have signed this agreement establishing the CFTA on behalf of the Republic of Kenya because I firmly believe in our shared destiny and in the fulfillment of the African dream. I thank you, Excellencies. Burkina Faso. Excellence, Monsieur le Président Paul Kagame, Président du Rwanda et Président en exercice de l'Union africaine, comme vous le savez, votre frère, le président Rock Marc Christian Cabouré, avait bien souhaité être avec vous aujourd'hui pour ce moment historique de notre organisation et dans cette belle ville de Kigali qu'il aime tant. Et il vous l'avait confirmé personnellement à la mi-février lors de votre entretien à Munich. Mais, Monsieur le Président, un agenda de politique intérieure ne lui a pas permis de venir et il vous présente ses regrets et il m'a donc chargé de vous traduire à vous au président Mahamadou Issoufou, au président Moussa Faki et à chacun des chefs d'État et chefs de délégation présents, ces vifs remerciements. Remerciements pour la solidarité exprimée pour chacun, par chacun de vous lors de la double attaque terroriste dont notre capitale Ouagadougou a été victime le 2 mars dernier. Directement comme indirectement, chacun d'entre vous a témoigné à lui et au peuple burkinabé votre compassion. Il a dit donc merci à tous pour votre soutien et votre engagement à aider le Burkina Faso et les pays du Sahel à combattre le terrorisme. Et il m'a chargé de vous lire sa déclaration. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, permettez-moi tout d'abord, avant tout propos donc, de saluer le leadership de son Excellence Monsieur Mahamadou Issoufou, Président de la République du Niger, et champion désigné pour la promotion du processus de la zone de libre-échange continentale. Sa foi en une Afrique unie a été déterminante dans l'obtention des résultats dont nous nous félicitons aujourd'hui. La zone de libre-échange a toujours été au cœur des vœux les plus chers des dirigeants africains. Permettez-moi à cet égard de rappeler ce que déclarait le père de la révolution burkinabé, l'ancien président Thomas Sankara, au sommet de l'OIA en juillet 1987, et je cite, « Faisons en sorte que le marché africain soit le marché des Africains, produit en Afrique, transformé en Afrique et consommé en Afrique. Produisons ce dont nous avons besoin et consommons ce que nous produisons au lieu d'importer. » Fin de citation. 
Notre souhait, c'est que la dimension développement soit consolidée et préservée pour l'ensemble des États membres de l'Union africaine, en particulier les pays les moins avancés, sans littoral et principalement importateurs de biens. La création de la zone de libre échange continental intervient à un moment où nous Uh, Zambia, uh, you have the floor. I thank you very much, Chair. Um, allow me to observe what protocol dictates, and I bring you warm and fraternal greetings from your dear colleague and brother, His Excellency President Edika Chagolungu. Allow me also to thank our host, uh, Your Excellency Mr. Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, for your gesture. Chairperson, let me also thank and commend the champion of uh, continental free trade area, His Excellency Mamadou Isofu, for his tireless efforts in advancing negotiations, ensuring that we attain the desired results towards the launch of the African continental free trade area in record time. Chairperson, I must hasten to state that the launch of the CFTA is just the beginning of the process. The onus is now on member states to ensure that the right policies and programs are put, are put in place to support private sector engagement in productive activities that add value to our natural resources and take advantage of emerging market access opportunities. Transformation must begin on the African continent by low levels of intra-Africa trade. We must begin to trade in value-added products amongst ourselves and sustainability and sustain, 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 sustain by support the welfare of our 1.3 billion people. Chairperson, Zambia stands ready and uh, committed to ensuring that we attain objectives of the CFTA. We will work with, the, uh, with all African Union member states to ensure that commitments under the CFTA. In, re in this regard, I'm confident that uh, the architecture of the agreement has taken care of the need for appropriate flexibilities and adjustment mechanisms to bring comfort to all the participating countries that the, arrange, the arrangement they are entering into is that partnership where benefits are shared equitably. Chairperson, in conclusion, I would like to appeal to the Assembly to ensure that our negotiations are given uh, appropriate guidance, support to finalize the remaining work and report, report sustain, substantial progress to, the, to our next meeting in July this year. In this regard, Zambia supports the roadmap that has been developed to of work in the remaining items. I thank you. Merci beaucoup. Muito obrigado. Thank you, Zambia. And now, Equatoria Guinea take the floor. Monsieur le Président, j'ai le plaisir de transmettre à son excellent le Président Paul Kagame, à qui je remercie pour l'accueil réservé à notre délégation, le message de son excellent le Président Obiangama Mbazwa et ce vœu de plein succès à ce rendez-vous extraordinaire. J'exprime aussi à son Excellence Mahamadou Issoufou, Président du Niger, toutes nos félicitations pour l'excellent rapport exhaustif qui révèle encore l'engagement et les efforts de l'Union africaine pour promouvoir et encourager l'intégration avec la création du marché unique africain pour la mise en œuvre des aspirations de l'agenda 2063 de l'Union africaine. La réunion extraordinaire des chefs d'État et de gouvernement qui se tient aujourd'hui dans cette belle ville de Kigali marque donc le lancement africain. Nous saluons ici cette gigantesque initiative des chefs d'État de l'Union africaine. Pour sur les retombées positives attendues dans la mise en place de cette zone de libre-échange continentale, il se peut aussi comprendre et seulement les difficultés, les obstacles en tout genre qui ont jalonné le processus avant d'arriver à ce jour du lancement, un jour aggravé dans les annales de notre organisation, l'Union africaine. Nous le savons tous, Monsieur le Président, le développement va de pair avec la paix et la sécurité. La paix est au cœur de toute stratégie d'intégration, tenant compte du contexte de guerre 
que nous impose le terrorisme international dans de nombreux et financé par les mains extérieures, se pose comme objectif la déstabilisation de nos pays s'attaquant et en visant à détruire nos réalisations. Mon pays, pays et pays de paix, qui inlassablement ouvre pour le dialogue et la coopération, a été le cible de ces mercenaires il y a encore quelques semaines. Nous devons donc le devoir de protéger nos populations qui goûtent dans la paix et la tranquillité les fruits de la croissance de nos États, croissance obtenue après bien des sacrifices. Pour autant, il nous paraît important de rester lucide, voire vigilant, de sorte que la zone de libre échange ne risque pas de devenir une plateforme favorisant le terrorisme et le mercenariat. Cette approche doit aussi envisager l'ensemble des citoyens et surtout les jeunes et les femmes qu'il nous faut impliquer dans notre démarche afin de contribuer à la promotion de leur employabilité. En effet, Now, thank you. Equatorial Guinea, now Namibia has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I present the statement by His Excellency Dr. Hage Gengob, the President of the Republic of Namibia. His Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda and Chairperson of the African Union, Your Excellencies of heads of state and government of the AU member states, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. With humility, we extend our gratitude to the government and people of the Republic of Rwanda for the successful hosting of this ordinary summit. 21 March marks the launch of the Grand African Continental Free Trade Area, but for all Namibians, it also brings in a national independence today. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, today is a historic day in that we realize the milestone that the African Union heads of state and government set in 2012 to establish a continental free trade area by an indicative date able to deliver on our commitment. As Africans, we should take pride in ourselves for launching the largest free trade area in the world that is aimed at integrating Africa's markets, strengthen our economic relationship, and signifies the unity of purpose amongst all the 55 AU member states. The AFCFTA is an integral part of the broader African integration and development agenda, as expounded in Agenda 2063. Its launch of the Pan-African aspirations of the founding fathers of the OAU who wished for a united and peaceful Africa, enjoying inclusive, sustainable development and socioeconomic prosperity. Africa's advancement remains first and foremost a matter for Africans. Therefore, now more than ever, we should provide the necessary inputs, impetus to implement a developmental African continental free trade area driven by industrialization. In this regard, other AU programs such as the Program for the Infrastructural Development of Africa for boosting intra-Africa trade and the Comprehensive Africa Agricultural Development Program would remain important complementary and supportive initiatives for the full achievement of the ACFTA objectives. Your Excellencies, while we welcome the achievement, we are marking today and applaud the contribution of all involved in the ACFTA negotiations. We also recognize that the more Thank you very much, Namibia. Now, Malawi, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I take the floor to speak on behalf of my president, His Excellency Professor Arthur Peter Mutarika, who could not be here today because of other commitments. Our people are full of expectation that they see a transformation that will get us closer to the Africa we want. African countries have, for a long time, traded with the outside world more than with each other on the continent. Therefore, the CFTA is the river we need to change this anomaly, which undermines our shared aspiration to increase Africa's industrial trade capacity. 
I should, however, point out that in order to realize the full objectives and benefits of the CFTA, which include poverty alleviation, a lot needs to be done between our countries. The Malawi government believes that the CFTA will be more meaningful to member states when its outcome entails the establishment of a fair and pro-development rules-based regional trading system, which enhances our trade potential and creates sufficient policy space for our continued development. As a country which has premised its development on a trade-based economic strategy, Malawi is committed to the CFTA and its ability to help create an efficient regional trade environment and rules-based system as an integral part of global economic and trade governance. Therefore, the CFTA needs to address productive and supply-side constraints that have hindered most African countries, such as Malawi, to take full advantage of the preferential market a commitment to the CFTA process. We therefore call for a heightened sense of agency, courage, mutual understanding, and flexibility as we close the gaps in negotiating the remaining modalities for implementation of this landmark initiative, which we launched today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Malawi. Now, South Sudan has the floor. Mr. Chairman, on behalf of my president, President Salva Kiir, may I did, I congratulate you for the successful launch of Africans' common free trade common uh, area. Mr. President, the document that was signed today was technically astute ably negotiated and legally scrapped to the extent that it attracted five more countries above the agreed threshold of 22 countries. Mr. President, having said that, I would like you and your colleagues to put the generation of Africa that is leading this process in history that it achieved the economic independence and prosperity of Africa. It is my dream, Mr. Chair, that one day, only one day, Africa will make donations for humanitarian crisis and development projects in America, in Europe. Mr. Chairman, the success of this project will depend on security in Africa. Today, as we speak, 16 countries in Africa are experiencing either internal war, terrorism, or post-war conflicts. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I therefore call upon you to regard rebellion and ethnicity as a negative activity that will compromise the success of this African's dream project. In this respect, I call upon the AU to support the EGAD-led high-level revitalization peace process under EGAD, hosted by the EBU leadership and the hospitality of the people of Ethiopia, whom we all respect and support. I further call upon Ethiopia, Cote d'Ivoire, and Guinea to stand with South Sudan in the UN Security Council, where the enemies of South Sudan looking for regime change are targeting our government and my people. Otherwise, Mr. Chairman, with due respect, I owe you great honor. Thank you. Thank you, South Sudan. Now, may we have uh, Guinea take the floor. Monsieur le Président, euh, le Président de la République de Guinée, Professeur Alpha Condé, empêché d'être avec vous en ce moment historique pour notre continent, m'a chargé de vous livrer en son nom le message qui suit. C'est toujours pour nous un plaisir réel de nous retrouver dans le pays des mille collines dont les populations, sous le leadership de mon frère et ami le Président Paul Kagame, ont su engager un processus de transformation économique profonde et bâtir une nation réconciliée. Monsieur le Président, le sommet extraordinaire qui nous réunit aujourd'hui, portant sur la signature de la zone de libre-échange continentale, émane de notre volonté commune de faire avancer l'un des projets phares de l'agenda 2063, à savoir l'intégration économique de l'Afrique. Je voudrais ici féliciter le président Issoufou, champion de la zone de libre-échange continentale, qui a su mobiliser les acteurs africains et nos partenaires 
pour faire de ce projet important pour l'Afrique une réalité. En panafricaniste convaincu, ce résultat obtenu par mon frère et ami Youssoufou me conforte dans ma conviction que lorsque les chefs d'État s'impliquent dans la gestion de dossiers de portée continentale, le succès est certain. Je voudrais aussi me féliciter du travail remarquable accompli par la Commission et nos ministres en charge du commerce qui ont élaboré le projet d'accord portant création de la zone de libre-échange continental que nous venons de signer. Cette signature pose un nouveau jalon dans la promotion du commerce intra-africain au bénéfice des populations africaines. Elle constitue également le tremplin d'un plus grand succès, un plus grand accès de notre continent au commerce international. Monsieur le Président, nous devons saisir l'opportunité de la mise en place de, la, de notre zone de libre-échange pour accroître substantiellement notre part dans le commerce mondial afin de booster la croissance inclusive et créer davantage d'emplois pour les jeunes et assurer l'autonomisation des femmes. Il nous appartient de soutenir ce pilier important de l'intégration. Nous n'avons pas d'autres alternatives. Notre continent doit être un espace exempt de toute entrave à la libre circulation des personnes et des biens. Monsieur le Président, après la signature, il est urgent de procéder à la ratification des instruments juridiques, toute chose qui renforcera leur appropriation en vue de la réalisation effective du marché commun africain. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Guinea. May we now have Egypt take the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, allow me to deliver the statement of His Excellency Abdel Fattah Sisi, President of Egypt. Your Excellency Paul Gagami, Your Excellency Heads of State and Government, Ladies and gentlemen, we meeting today with pride and happiness to see in order to crown uh, the strong determination of the states of Africa and its peoples and their representatives who have been working for two years now in order to reach the establishment of the free trade area. I would like to, re to reaffirm the, the determination of Egypt for the success of the FCFTA as it has uh, always uh, done and as it has uh, provided the support and assistance uh, in uh, finalizing the t legal text of the FCT and we will, ne will spare no efforts to move forward the negotiating uh, phase, the coming negotiating fa phases. And we are delighted uh, to um, see the huge paths, steps that we have made so far, but we need also to continue and pursue our work in order to finalize the, nego the pending negotiations as, uh, and to, to um, fast track or to start without any delay the second phase. I would like to commend all the efforts made by the African Union Commissions and its uh, bodies by assisting our um, neg chief negotiators and our groups, and I would like to, get to, to reiterate uh, the support and assistance of Egypt uh, to host uh, as well and to offer the, to host uh, this new entity that we are creating, that is the free trade area, the continental free trade area. We, the, uh, a great deal of work is ahead of us. Uh, regarding uh, the establishment uh, of this free trade area and to boost the tra continental trade, especially when it comes to the infrastructure and the transport sector also is uh, very important. And you might agree with me that infrastructure is an important, um, uh, is extremely important to um, boost the trade among all our countries in order to reach some 22% of uh, our uh, trade by 2022. Allow me to uh, insist on the importance of liberalizing services uh, 
due to its importance in the achievement of sustainable development, and it has also a direct link with the industrialization and the development of infrastructure. But to conclude, I would like to extend my thanks to Your Excellency, to, the, to Your Excellency Paul Kagame and the President of Uganda for hosting us. Thank you, Egypt. May we now have uh, Ghana take the floor. Mr. Chairperson, Excellencies, uh, your brother, President Akufuado, has been compelled by circumstances completely beyond his control to leave Kigali just a couple of minutes ago. I then have the honor to read his statement on his behalf. Uh, Chairperson, your Excellencies, I'm grateful for the opportunity to make these brief remarks on such a seminal occasion, the signing of the treaty for the establishment of the continental free trade area. I have no doubt that the coming into being of the CFTA is one of the most important decisions the African Union will ever take. I thank President Paul Kagame for his warm hospitality and ability to host these meetings, and President Mamadou Yusufu for his strong leadership of this issue and the AU organs for the ability uh, quality of their work. 55 years ago, the OAU was formed to spearhead the struggle for liberation and decolonization of our continent. Its triumph ushered us into the era of the African Union, our continental body, which is now the champion of our collective interest in the global community. The time is now right that we demonstrate strong political will to make the AU an economic and political success and to make the project of integration real. With Africa's population set to reach 2 billion people in 20 years' time, the African common market presents immense opportunities to bring prosperity to our continent with hard work, enterprise, and creativity. Hence the importance of the success of the continental free trade area. A working common continental market has to be a very fundamental objective of all peoples and governments on the continent. Research has shown that countries or groups of countries with the largest share of world trade are located within regions with the highest levels of intra-regional trade. It is thus vital that the treaty works and that the continental free trade area becomes reality. Chairperson, Excellencies, the Ghanaian people and our government are fully committed to the success of the CFTA, and indeed, Ghana has already indicated a readiness to host the CFTA Secretariat, a request I hope will be looked at favorably by your excellencies. An increase in trade is the, most, uh, is the shortest way to develop fruitful relations between our respective countries. It will mean a rapid increase in the exchanges of our agri agricultural, financial, industrial, scientific, and technological products, which will enhance dramatically our attainment of prosperity and the prospects of employment for the broad masses of Africans, particularly our youth. Ghana's vision remains a united, peaceful. Uh, thank you, Ghana. Now may we have uh, Mali take the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Président Paul Kagame, Président de la République du Rwanda, nous vous adressons nos remerciements pour la chaleur et la gentillesse de votre accueil et ces remerciements évidemment vont au peuple rwandais tout entier. Monsieur le Président, votre frère et ami, le Président Ibrahim Boubacar, qui est tellement historique, il m'a chargé de le représenter. Nous avons communiqué les résultats des signatures, les performances de ce matin. Et le Président de la République du Mali m'a chargé de vous dire que ces performances ont été saluées par les applaudissements du Conseil des ministres qui se réunissait ce matin même à Bamako. Monsieur le Président, le Président de la République du Mali m'a chargé spécifiquement et d'encourager à nouveau le Président Mahamadou Issoufou, son frère et ami, pour son engagement à conduire ce projet-là et à atteindre les résultats que nous avons atteints ce matin. Il m'a demandé de féliciter et d'encourager le président de la Commission de l'Union africaine, M. Moussa Faki Mahamat, pour l'ensemble des projets qu'il porte. 
et il m'a demandé de lui garantir le soutien de la République du Mali. À vous-même, Monsieur le Président Paul Kagame, le Président de la République du Mali réaffirme son soutien au projet que vous conduisez et il vous assure de, votre, de son soutien durant tout le long de votre mandat à la tête de notre Union. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much, uh, Mali. Now I think we, can, we come to the end of uh, statements. May I now uh, request the Commission to uh, communicate uh, what uh, he wishes to do. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, juste une petite annonce à l'attention de l'excellence le chef de délégation concernant les discours qui viennent d'être donnés ici. Comme vous le savez, l'information a été communiquée à tous les États membres par note verbale qu'il y aura un livre d'or qui va contenir les différents discours faits à cette session extraordinaire. Alors, ma collègue, déjà la directrice du commerce, va envoyer ses collègues pour faire le tour des délégations, pour collecter les, les discours, mais également les délégations sont cordialement priées pour donner une copie de la discours. Mais également... La Commission aura besoin de la version Word, la version Word électronique de ces discours-là, pour les refléter dans le livre qui sera publié plus tard pour commémorer cet événement. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much. Now, I wish to bring to the attention of the Excellencies that uh, reference to the earlier point raised by the president of Ghana, um, the following has been uh, modified to reflect the different views, uh, including those raised by the president of Ghana. And this has been done by the Uh, commission, uh, the side of the, the, the legal side of the commission. Uh, let me read for you uh, Article 13, the Secretariat. The Assembly shall establish the Secretariat, decide on its nature, location, and approve its structure and budget. Two, the commission shall be the interim secretariat until it is fully operational. Three, the secretariat shall be a functionally autonomous institutional body within the African Union system with an independent legal personality. Four, the Secretariat shall be autonomous of the African Union Commission. Five, the funds of the Secretariat shall come from the overall annual budgets of the African Union. Six, the roles and responsibilities of the Secretariat shall be determined by the Council of Ministers of Trade. So really, if you look at Numbele, uh, ultimately we will be the one deciding. So I think it has captured all the views and uh, it has indicated what remains to be done. So I just wanted to bring to your attention the fact that uh, The point raised by Ghana earlier has been uh, taken care of. Now, so if you agree to these changes read to you, I would ask the assembly that we adopt this article as it stands. Adopted. Now what follows is the 
after all the statements we have heard, uh, Your Excellencies, um, we will now uh, follow this, uh, these statements that have been concluded with the unveiling of the plaque. Uh, so we, Chief of Protocol, will guide us uh, through this. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Euh, nous allons donc conclure cette grande journée. Euh, C'est la deuxième section, en fait, de, de la signature euh, des accords. Nous allons la conclure avec le, par le dévoilement de la plaque <coughs> qui se fera à, à l'autre extrémité par les présidents, les, leurs excellences, les présidents euh, Paul Kagame, euh, le président Youssoufou et puis le président de la Commission de l'Union africaine. Je voudrais que les collègues qui sont chargés de cette opération avancent déjà pour qu'on puisse faire descendre nos leaders. Ça va être la, pla la plaque commémorative pour l'événement que... Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, nous venons de passer une journée mémorable grâce aux efforts de tous. Nous arrivons maintenant à la conclusion de cette session. Euh, je voudrais inviter ici M. Ali Moufourouki, président de Infotech Industries, Industries de la Tanzanie, pour le discours de remerciement, c'est un homme d'affaires et ce sont eux qui vont engager le processus de la zone de libre-échange.
Your Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda. Your Excellency Mr. Faki Mohamed, Chairman of the African Union Commission, Heads of State and Government, representatives of the regional economic communities, international organizations, civil society, distinguished representatives of the African private sector. My task is to offer two votes of thanks. First, on behalf of all of you, and secondly, on behalf of the African private sector community. I'll start with the big one. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great emotion that I would like to read out this vote of thanks where I have the honor to propose on behalf of all of you to hail this important event. We have just lived a historic moment. It is therefore right and proper that we pay tribute to the actors who are in the front line. I would like to particularly mention our ministers of trade and their respective experts, the African Union Commission, the regional economic communities, and the various partners who have accompanied us in our march towards the establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Needless to say, all this has been accomplished under the enlightened leadership of His Excellency Mahamadou Isufu, President of the Republic of Niger, and the designated leader for the African Continental Free Trade Area Task Force. His personal commitment resulted in the organization and supervision of several preparatory meetings in Niamey and other African cities. His report, as well as his statement at the opening ceremony, allowed everyone to appreciate the work he has done, but especially his perfect knowledge of the issues and his commitment to the integration of the African continent. The free trade area represents an important step forward in our journey towards the integration of our continent. Its rapid entry into force is an indicator of our political will to join the Pan-Africanist dynamic of the founding fathers of the OAU. As the chairperson of the African Union Commission has fervently emphasized, it will be the lever of Africa's economic transformation and will give a powerful boost to intra-African trade with all the resulting benefits on behalf of all of us present to express our gratitude and encouragement to all the actors who have had the heavy burden of working for the success of this project, which gives Africa a new geopolitical position on the international scene. That's the end of my first vote of thanks. Now, the second vote of thanks is being made by the Afro Champions Initiative, the organization that put together the investment forum yesterday in collaboration with the African Commission. And we had a very interesting day, I think a very successful day. So, Your Excellencies, please allow me to speak on behalf of my colleagues who I represent here in my capacity as Vice President of the Afro Champions Initiative for the Eastern African region. We want to first of all express our gratitude for being invited. It is not common that the private sector find itself in these kind of events with this kind of prominence. So I truly thank you, Mr. President and the Chairman of the AU Commission for inviting us to contribute, to offer our ideas, and to contribute to the effort of making this a possibility. We are very honored to be part of this historic moment. Not only have we participated in the signing of the much-awaited agreement, which for the first time market on our continent, but also because the public institutions of the continent and the business community have also for the first time agreed to work together to address the challenge 
of African economic integration. And not just agreed, but also delivered the instruments to do so. We look forward to being able to play an important part in this movement. And believe me, we are ready to work very hard to make the Af Africa CFTA an instrument of shared prosperity, capable of strengthening African know-how, creating regional value chains, and facilitating deployment of African innovations all over the continent. We are committed to achieving this goal as soon as possible. And we have identified partnership opportunities that we are going to pursue with the African Union uh, and the African uh, the EU Commission. We will identify opportunities beyond our borders. That is the commitment of our private sector. We will seize the opportunities created by the F Africa CFTA to increase intra-Africa trade, to develop skills and capabilities beyond our home countries, and to support the African youth. We will commit more to intra-African investments. In the short term, however, I would like to be more specific about what we want to do. So within the Afro Champions Initiative, we have asked ourselves, what can we do to give impetus, even more impetus to this momentum that has been built over the last few days? So we have decided that we are going to commit, and this is just the first commitment, one million US dollars to fund awareness raising actions of the CFTA across the African continent. Obviously, working in collaboration with the African Union, because the politicians, for all their flaws, are not the ones who break the free trade area agreements or the trade pacts that our country signs. It is us in the private sector who lobby the politicians to hold back, to not sign sometimes even to walk away from these agreements. So we realize that there is a lot of work that needs to be done in educating our colleagues in the private sector, their trade unions, civil societies, on the importance, the significance, and the timeliness of the CFTA. And we are going to do that, and we are going to commit money uh, to doing that together with the African Union. We want to enhance public-private dialogue around the CFTA. You saw that the next tasks that are going to be done, the ratification uh, and, uh, and, and, and signing into law uh, of these instruments happens more smoothly and more quickly. And how are we going to do that? We are going to work together with the people, the colleagues at the African Union, to invite them to a series of sensitization meetings with local business communities and other social groups across the African continent, and this work will start immediately next month. <laughs> Secondly, we are going to conduct research and knowledge sharing to support the African Union's public policies impacting business. The Afro Champions Initiatives Research Center will share its extensive research work on intra-African investment. One of the problems we have discovered is that a lot of uh, people don't know, don't know the African companies that are doing great work on the continent. So we have been working to identify them, the magnitude of their business, the size of their networks, the number of people they employ, the technologies they innovate, and we want to share that information with the African Union so that when policies are made in different countries and at the EU level, these policies help and do not hinder the growth of these industries. We are going to promote intra-African trade and investment in collaboration with the African Union Commission and also in partnership with the Afri Exim Bank, as you've heard the president and chairman of that bank speak over lunch. And we are going to also support uh, with our funds and effort the dialogue with civil society to make sure that all members of our communities come on board. But we are starting with one important initiative. We have just launched the Africa Passport Now campaign which consists of a citizen, citizen's online petition to government to speed up the creation of a unique African passport accessible to every African. In our view, this is also the best way to make the African CFTA attractive, tangible, and useful for our fellow citizens in Africa. <laughs> Excellencies, 
Honorable delegates, we will keep you informed of the outcomes of these actions to be conducted with AU Commissioner for Trade and Industry and his great team, which we also wish to thank here very much for the productive collaboration we've had with them to date. I thank you for your attention and for your commitment to, like to make the African CFTA a reality as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Nous vous remercions. J'ai quelques petites annonces. La première, c'est qu'il y a des gens qui ont perdu des effets. Nous avons un comptoir à l'entrée principale du côté de l'hôtel, comptoir pour les objets retrouvés. Donc, ceux qui ont perdu quelque chose peuvent se rendre là-bas pour récupérer. La deuxième annonce, c'est que le groupe des hommes d'affaires a une photo à se faire le matin. Il y a eu un contretemps. Donc, après le discours de clôture de son Excellence le Président Paul Kagame, vous allez vous diriger de ce côté, les hommes d'affaires, avec les chefs d'État et de gouvernement pour la photo. La troisième annonce, c'est la conférence de presse, après la photo de groupe, mais la conférence de presse ne concerne que le podium, c'est-à-dire les deux chefs d'État et le président de la Commission. Et la dernière annonce, c'est que son Excellence le Président Kagame, euh, veut bien terminer la journée. Donc, il invite chaque délégation, sur la base de 1 plus 2, à une réception dans la salle de banquet, là où nous avons eu le déjeuner. 1 plus 2 par délégation et tous les membres de la Commission de l'Union africaine. De ce fait, je voudrais ici redonner la parole à Son Excellence, Monsieur le Président Paul Kagame, pour le discours de clôture. Je vous remercie tous. for the clarifications and the communication to uh, the floor. Excellencies, uh, heads of state and government, uh, Excellency Musa Faki Mahmoud, chairperson of the African Union Commission, Excellencies, former heads of state, Distinguished uh, heads of delegation, leaders, uh, business leaders, commissioners, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a, a memorable day for the people of Africa. Allow me once again to commend everyone involved in bringing us to this stage. The private sector is a pillar of a strong and prosperous Africa. I thank business leaders for their active participation in this summit. This is a very welcome development which should continue as a lasting partnership. The task now is to ratify the African Continental Free Trade Area and the protocol on the free movement of persons so that they may come into force as soon as possible. It is well understood that some member states require additional time for internal procedures and consultations. The African Union and all of us are going to be called upon to deliver as never before. Indeed, the need to efficiently and effectively manage major programs such as this is the reason why we are prioritizing the institutional and financial reform 
of our organization. I therefore request that we continue to give the reform process the full attention it deserves. Today's milestone is an indication of how much is possible when we work together. Let's use the momentum we have gained to push forward with the Agenda 2063 flagship projects that we have committed ourselves to in the first 10-year implementation plan. Finally, in order to fully realize the benefits of continental free trade, I would like to underscore the necessity of ensuring that women and young people have their full and rightful place. I wish you all a safe journey home and thank you very much for your kind attention. But before I close completely, let me turn once again to thanking our CFTA champion, Mamadou Isouf, the president of Niger, who has ably <laughs> led us through this process. I now have the honor to declare the extraordinary session of the assembly closed and invite us all to rise for the African Union anthem.
You people don't follow. Oui, euh, je voudrais euh, annoncer au groupe des négociateurs que le président de l'excellence, le président Issouf Mohamedou Issoufou, accepte de vous recevoir ici après la conférence de presse. Donc le groupe des négociateurs qui a demandé à rencontrer son excellence, le président Mohamedou Issoufou, après la conférence de presse ici. Pour l'instant, c'est la photo de groupe. Par là, s'il vous plaît. Euh, Excellence, il y a de bonnes nouvelles. On célèbre tout. C'est une grande journée, c'est un nouveau départ pour l'Afrique. Donc, Son Excellence le Président Kagame vous fait dire que la paix... Oui, oui, Afrique